Our next speaker is uh, Yael Winkler uh, from uh, Tel Aviv University. Uh, she will talk about uh, CLIPASO, a semantically aware object sketching. And uh, this is joint work with uh, Hassan uh, Paju Heshgar, uh, Jessica uh, Bow, Roman Christian Bechman, Amit Bermano, Dan Dani Kuenor, Am uh, Amir Zamir, and Dalia Shamir. Uh, from, uh, all of them are from Tel Aviv University, Reichman University, and EPFL. Thank you. Um, okay, so hi everyone, uh, I'm Yael Winker, and um, I will talk today about our work, Lipasso, Semantically Aware Object Sketching. And uh, this work was done in collaboration with all of these amazing people. And we were very honored to also uh, win the Best Paper Award at SIGGRAPH 2022, among other five uh, great papers. So in this work, we propose a method to convert an image into a sketch, uh, allowing for different levels of abstraction. And the output sketches preserve the key visual features of the subject drawn. So here, for example, you can see how the main characteristics of the flamingo are preserved such as the general pose and structure of the flamingo, and also some characteristics that we know that flamingos usually have, such as the long legs and the special shape of the neck. So the main observation that motivates our work is that abstractions are core to art. Drawings are usually highly sparse compared to photographs, forcing the artist to perform depiction in very few strokes. And um, this famous series of lithographs by uh, Pablo Picasso also inspired our, our work, and also the title Clipasso is inspired by this uh, series. So here, Picasso depicts the incremental abstraction of a bull. And you can see that as the abstraction increases, Picasso emphasizes the semantic features of the bull, such as the horns and the tail. And it is important to notice that there is a trade-off here between representing a fully detailed specific bull and representing the concept of a bull. So having this in mind, in our work, we aim to produce sketches at different levels of abstraction that convey both the geometry and the semantic of the input object. So this task of uh, sketch to image generation, uh, image to sketch generation has been widely explored and existing methods usually rely on existing sketch data sets to learn these abstractions. However, each data set has different characteristics in terms of abstraction and style. So you can see that, for example, in some data sets, the sketches are guided by the geometry of some input image. And there are other data sets where the sketches are more abstract, guided only by text. Therefore, existing methods that rely on such data sets are limited to a certain style and abstraction level. And of course, they are limited to the categories observed in training. In contrast, our approach is to express these abstractions without directly relying on a sketch data set. And we propose the three key ideas that make this possible. The first one is the representation. We define a sketch as a set of strokes, and the level of abstraction is controlled by the number of strokes. So as we decrease the number of strokes, we will get a sketch that is more abstract. Second is the optimization. We don't train a network here at all. We use a differentiable rasterizer to optimize the strokes parameters directly. And third, since we don't want to rely on any sketch data set, we use clip model in order to fill the semantic gap. So a few words about clip for those of you who are uh, not familiar with it. And um, so clip is a neural network from OpenAI uh, trained on 400 million image text pairs collected from the internet with the objective of learning a shared latent space between images and text. So clip models are found to be very useful for a wide range of zero shot tasks. And the, uh, it was also has been shown that clip is exceptional at encoding the semantic meaning of visual depictions, regardless of their style. So in our context of sketches, this means that we can use a pre-trained clip model to extract features from both a sketch and the natural RGB image uh, without any fine tuning. So this is the overview of our method and we will begin with the uh, optimization part marked in, in, in gray. So we start with a set of N strokes. Uh, each stroke is a Bezier curve with four control points. And let's assume for now that the strokes are initialized randomly. 
Then these parameters are fed into the differentiable rasterizer that outputs the, ra the rasterized sketch. Then both the sketch and the input image are fed into a pre-trained clip model to compute a loss distance between the two. So since this entire forward process was differentiable, we can then back propagate the gradients through the frozen clip model and the frozen rasterizer to update the strokes parameter. And we repeat this process iteratively until the strokes converge. And here, are, uh, here is an example of a few iterations. It's really fun to look at. Okay, so our loss function is defined by two terms, L-semantic and L-geometric. L-semantic is simply the cosine distance between the clip embeddings of the input image and the rasterized sketch. However, uh, if we think about it, clip was trained with the objective of fitting pairs of image and text and not image and image. So therefore, uh, clip's final encodings are primarily semantic in nature. So if we use only the finding embeddings, our sketches will be semantically correct at the class level, but not at the instance level. And here is an example of uh, this sketch. Uh, the, the convergence was trained only using L-semantic. And we can see the horse-like features, such as the tail and the legs. But of course, this is not a sketch of this specific horse. It's a sketch of some horse. So to overcome this, we propose to use another loss term which we name L-geometric. And L-geometric is the L2 distance between intermediate activation levels of clip. And this helps us to preserve the geometry of the input image. To sum up, our final objective is to find a set of strokes that minimize the sum of L-geometric and L-semantic. And now let's go back to the initialization of the strokes. If we think about our objective function, it is very complicated and highly non-convex, and therefore the optimization process is susceptible to initialization. So here, for example, you can see um, two different initializations uh, applied on the same input image, this dog. And we indeed observe that the initialization affects significantly on the final output. Of course, the uh, left dog is much Worse, it's, yeah, uh, worse than uh, the right one. So uh, let's think what happened here. So we can see that when the strokes are initialized in salient regions, they converge to a better solution. And here they were initialized next, next to the dog's face. So to encourage convergence toward better depictions, we place the initial strokes based on the salient regions of the target image. And now for the results. Uh, so here we can see from left to right sketches with four levels of abstraction using 32, 16, 8, and only four strokes. And we can see indeed that the main characteristics and also the semantics of the input images are preserved in there even under the highly challenging case of drawing these images using only four strokes. It's very hard even for humans. And another advantage of our method is that in contrast to other sketch uh, methods, we don't rely on any sketch data set. We rely only on the expressiveness of clip. And therefore, we are able to also cope with, uh, very, with distinct classes. So here, for example, are some sketches of special classes, uh, such as a drawing of a unicorn or, or sculptures or uh, a lot of creative uh, stuff. And lastly, uh, since we use a vector representation, it's also possible to place a new style on top of the abstract sketch to get these uh, kind of style, stylized sketches. And uh, of course, you're welcome to visit our website and try out our demo. And thank you for listening. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, questions? Yeah, there is a question there. Ellie? Oh. Hi. Nice talk. How difficult would it be to generalize this to clips, not to single images, but to make like short animations from the videos? To generalize to what? I, I couldn't hear to, to, Not to work on single images, but short clips. Short ah, videos. Video. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
It's a good question. Actually, we tried. Uh, basically, it works quite well uh, frame by frame, but uh, th then you have the frame by frame usual problems of flickering, uh, but it could be a very interesting uh, future work. Okay. Uh, I have a question about uh, here, uh, right, your right side. Hi. Um, I, um, I presume that uh, sets of lines can be equivalent graphically. Do you have some term about the quality of the lines so they really simulate like hand strokes, like more continuous perhaps, or with the same length more or less? Sure. So uh, basically, we rely on a specific differentiable uh, renderer uh, named DFVG, which is a very nice uh, implementation. Mm -hmm. And we, we are restricted to the kind of curves that uh, DFVG can uh, ra render differ in a differentiable way. So this is why uh, we chose under the, the possible primitives available in this library, we chose the uh, cubic Bezier curve, which is uh, quite ex uh, expressive. Um, however, and this is why we overlay the style after optimization. However, with the advancement of a uh, differentiable renderer, it will be possible to use whatever primitive uh, you choose. I have a question. Great work, by the way. Thanks. Uh, the result can be evaluated uh, subjectively. So I wonder how do you evaluate the quality of your results? Okay, good question. And so of course we conducted the user study and we, we measured two, two aspects of the sketches. Because um, but we defined that our goal is to produce sketches that are correct both in the geometric and the semantic levels. So we conducted this kind of study where we showed uh, the, the participants a sketch and then at different levels of abstraction. And then we asked two questions. Uh, the first one is, what is the class of this sketch? And we really observed that as the abstraction level increases, uh, the sketch are less recognizable. And the second test to, to assess the geometric part is that we show uh, the users the sketch and along with four images from the same class. And we asked, for example, four cats, and we asked the user to choose which specific cat or object uh, described this sketch. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, let's thank the speaker again. Thanks. So uh, we thank the, all the speakers uh, for the great talks in this session.